every pro was once an amateur and every expert was once a beginner. Welcome to the DYA Network where we're on a mission to bring you essential resources and cutting edge information to help young athletes attain their maximum potential while developing the champion within. I'm your host, David Edwards, and welcome to the network. Hello, everyone, and yes, welcome to the DYA Developing Young Athletes Network that we call Network Nation, and welcome to this Monday's episode. Now, today, everyone, I wanted to go over something that is really important. We go over a lot of different things. We've talked about a lot with a lot of different guests that we've had on the show, as well as myself giving tips and ideas and educational pieces that can help with athlete development. One thing that's really important, this is part of that foundational process of development, is posture. Posture is important because if we think about something here, if you look up some statistics on just ACL injuries, over 70% of ACL injuries to the knee are non-contact. They are non-contact, they're biomechanical, dealing with movement, musculoskeletal, and dealing with neuromuscular development, where in some areas body control can be lacking. And that's what I want to go over today, how important posture is, because sometimes I think we look at posture as just a standing static position where we're looking at how our head is aligned with our shoulders and hips, with the upper portion of our bodies, really looking at thoracic and cervical along with our head. And it's more to it than that. When we're looking at postural position, first of all, what is posture? Posture deals with positioning from head to toe. This is what's important is we have to look at how our bodies move through static and dynamic movement with our posture. If we have any inefficiencies there, we can increase the risk of injury. I just, a couple of weeks, going on two weeks ago now, we're coming out with more this week, but here's the thing. I had done something on the athletic stance, and if you look at just the, the mechanics of movement, everything there is dealing with posture in that movement pattern. What is important is that we need to understand that from the simple fact, from position to position, posture will change. But you must have optimal positions as you move. So in, let, let me give an example of this. So if you're dealing with a sprinter in maximum velocity, there's a posture there. If you're dealing with sitting, there's a posture with sitting, walking. Sleeping is even a posture as well. Lifting weights. If I'm doing a deadlift, there's a posture that I should have there. If I'm rowing a boat, there's a posture I have there. Soccer with deceleration. Hopefully I'm, this is making sense to everyone is that as coaches and those that work with athletes, even parents, we need to look at the subtleties of movement in order to identify our, the athlete moving as something that could be a potential risk. Because when an athlete is moving inefficiently with poor postural alignment, some muscles are inhibited and cannot fire efficiently. Think of a tower. Here's a great analogy I use with a lot of people. If you look at a tower, if I look at a tower and it's supported by cables and around that tower are cables and each one of those cables are tight to keep that tower in that vertical position. Now imagine on one side that the cables are stabilized. They're, they're tight on each end, equally distributed. So it's symmetrical. Now I look at a situation where one cable might be tight, the other is weak. Now think of that that tower as the spine already have some inefficiencies with muscle that might be inhibited in one area that is not firing and the others are firing more. So that's inefficiency. That's a compensatory pattern. The spine goes through function with movements and muscles fire based upon that is that if we're running into a situation where we have any inefficiency, where one area is stronger than the other, like that tower, well, we put risk of injury in that area. For example, if I'm having, I'm gonna use the low back for example, and looking at a postural positioning with the spine. At the low back, if there's an increased curvature in the lower back, what you find is you're having more of that lordotic. We have a natural lordotic curvature of the lower back, the lumbar region, but if that is increased, what we end up doing is we're deactivating some of the core muscles. So when the spine against gravity, we lack core stability, and we can have inadequate muscle firing. So if you think of any loading or distribution or shock absorp absorption when landing, we're putting that athlete at risk of a potential injury. So now think about this too as well with that. If you're looking at a situation where the athlete is trying to do a back load of a squat or a deadlift or a runner, in that position where we have more of that lordotic curvature, we're not, the spine 
absorbs force. We're putting it into an unnatural positioning with things we can do to strengthen in some areas and stretch. In other words, to stabilize the spine, especially the pelvis. The pelvic is out of out of balance there. We're looking at we're more anterior tilt of the pelvis. I won't get too technical with it, but it just keep it simple. When we're looking at posture, we have to make sure these things are correctly balanced. We have to look at a certain way a landmark looking to find out if the athlete is performing at their optimal level with movement. If they're not, we're at that risk, like I said before. What I'm going to do here is go over some ways you can look at the athlete to see if there's a potential for risk or things that can be improved because just think about it. The body is constantly changing position at various speeds and durations, and that can be a practice, that can be at a game, that can be with exercise and activity, and we can look for those things. For example, if I'm an athlete and I'm going through all these sports movements with switches of direction, and this is not corrected early, it might not affect me when I'm young, but think of that ACL injury. They might have landed wrongly for a long time. They might have gone through a situation where an ACL is torn, they've jumped, and they had more of that valgus collapse of the knee, and now what's happened all of a sudden, there's an injury that had occurred. Now, with that injury occurring, that's something that could have been addressed earlier by just looking at the movement pattern of that athlete. And you probably ask yourself, okay, that's fine, but what can I do to make sure the athlete is performing good posture? One thing is you want to look. You want to video. You want to take notes of things that you see. And I think the best way to start is from a static position with standing. I call this the, the three-point alignment. And what you want to look at, if I look at a side view of an athlete, what I'm looking at is the spine to be stacked. So if you're looking at the ear, shoulder, and you're also looking at the hip region, you're looking at that should be in alignment all the way to from the hip to the knee to the foot. It should be in a vertical position. If it's not, that's telling us something. If they have more of a kyphotic position, meaning that forward lean with the head and the rounded shoulders, you'll see those points of contact are not there. That could tell me something. You can look at your child in a mirror, take a picture, watch him at home. You can see this and with the rounded shoulder. Here's something that can potentially happen as you get older. If any of you have been through physical therapy and had any shoulder impingement, one thing that a therapist will look at is your postural positioning. They'll look to correct that because there's a series of things they do when they go through an evaluation and an assessment, and that's things that they look for. Now, imagine if that was caught earlier. Maybe that impingement could have been avoided, but we have to learn to look at those things. Like I said, a kyphotic posture can affect our shoulders. It can affect our neck. But if we catch it early, we're teaching that neutral position with the spine that carries over to functionality with movement in different positions. The thing to look for from a front view, I want you to look at a front view now. What you want to look in the front view is you're looking at the head, the shoulders, the hips, which is the pelvis, pelvic region. You're also looking at the knees and the joint angles. So if I'm looking at the pelvis, you want to make sure that it's symmetrical. So there's not a tilt to the left or right from a frontal view. The head should be in alignment. If I look at the nose down the sternum, it's in a straight vertical position, making a, a reverse T at the hips. That's telling me they have good positioning from a frontal position when I look at the thoracic region I'm looking at the cervical I'm looking at the head but I'm also looking at the hips now if I look at the knees when I'm looking from the hip the knee to the ankle the foot there should be an alignment there this is a straight line if you watch that video that we have out on the athletic stance you can look at that and see what I'm talking about as well as other videos we'll be doing this as well we want to make sure in those positions that's what you're looking for so imagine if an athlete is now doing landing mechanics for this. If you're jumping and they're landing, you're looking to see are those alignments there from a frontal position. And if they're landing too with deceleration, I'm sorry, when they're decelerating with running, you're looking to find out from a frontal position, well, where is the hips in alignment to the, to the, to the knees, in alignment to the ankles, in alignment to the shoulders, the hips, all of it in balance. We want it to be symmetrical. If there's a shift in any of those areas, that can identify things that we can work on. You also want to look at their normal walking. What is their gait like? Are they more in that lordotic at the lumbar where they're, they're that arched back where the, you call it the butt is sticking out, their stomach is out more? Because if you think about a position like that for some of us adults, think of a, a lady when she's pregnant. How many have had low back pain? Or when a gentleman might carry more girth, more weight in the abdominal region that can create low back pain. And you can see that lordotic position in the lower back. But how many people have you seen with that curvature, especially as they get older, up in the shoulders and the neck? 
that they talk about neck pain or those that have had neck pain and I talked about earlier with an assessment to find out if that's something that you should look at correcting, getting a more upright posture. These are things to look for at home. The other thing is this, what are kids doing at home? Sitting, they're doing homework. Look at their postural position on cell phones because what happens when they're doing a lot of these things? They're in that flex position with the neck. They're looking down. When you're texting, a lot of people, when they're, they're reading a book or they're on a computer, it's not at that correct level, at eye level, that we're doing the work at. We're always in that flexion position. Now, you're probably saying, yeah, but what does this have to do with sports? Well, we have to start good habits. And if we start kids with these habits and they're aware of this, when you start to cue them when they're performing movements with sports or even I'll talk about later screening, it makes more sense because now they're having a better understanding. But also you're having a better understanding, too, to find out, wait a minute, this is something we have to work on. And I keep saying it over and over. I'm redundant with it. The optimal movement, the efficiency isn't there. This can help their performance. Coach, I just saw this. This is something we need to work on with these athletes. That's not there. We can keep track with this this way. This is one of the ways that I like that we use, too, is that the warm-up. For all of you out there that the coaches and working with athletes, start using that warm-up. I talked about using a warm-up for mobility flexibility. But you're also looking at the warm-up, too, to give verbal cues. Video this. Make, keep track of it. If an athlete's doing something as a lunge, where are they at in that stack position when they're walking into the lunge with the upper part of their body, the upper from the thoracic, the lumbar, through that three-point contact, I said the ear, the shoulder, the hips, or are they getting more forward lean, that flexion with the trunk, that you can cue them to come more upright as they go into that eccentric load into the lunge. Knee alignment, you're looking at that from a frontal position. Think about it. If I'm doing the lunge and they're getting that knee to collapse in, that's something you can cue. The bounds, the bounds I'm looking at their landing. How is their postural control with the bounds, marching, A skips, heel toe walks, all of it you can do to cue this to look to say, hey, you know what? They're getting better with this, especially when they're starting to get at that that age of puberty, pubescence, where it's more you should focus there because that growth spurt is there. When they're real young, you give subtle cues, but you want them to have fun because their attention span is not long. So if I'm working with young athletes, you might want to have them mimic you and start pointing out subtle things. Get your chest up. Get stand up taller when you're doing it. So now it is start carrying over as they get older. And I look at really getting more focus on these things when they're getting to that fifth, sixth grade level, where their attention span is there, where you're really starting to get more honing in on this, especially with screening. That is a perfect time when you look at movement with screening with the athletes. I have something coming out we've been working on is the, the squat screen. This is something great that you can look at athletes, all you can do, but it's letting us know body position at a basic level. Young kids at early stages of development, I call this the foundation. These are things that are very important. And posture is something that sometimes I think we overlook. Everyone looks at posture is from the, the waist up. But when you think of posture, it's functioning in every level of movement that we do. For example, I want to use a squat for an example. And if you looked at doing a squat and we looked at the positioning of the trunk and we looked at the head and the neck from a side positioning, those three points of contact still apply. Because if some of you are saying, well, that's fine from a side view in a static position. OK, I'm looking at an athlete with them standing upright at home. But what do I do now when they're doing a position where there's some dynamic movement? Well, if I look at a squat, it's the same thing I said, just like with the lunge. Where is the spine in alignment? Where is it at neutral? They'll call it flat back. There might be slight curvature in the low back, which is fine because we have a natural curvature in the lumbar spine. But when that is overemphasized with movement, that's what you're looking for. We want to make sure that through each of these movement patterns, we understand those basic things. So just remember, looking at those three points with the upper body at the lower body, we want to look at the alignment with the hip, the knee, and the foot. It is very imperative we look at these things. Information is out there. This is something that I'm excited about. A lot more organizations, coaches, and those that work with athletes, this is getting better. I wish these things would have been pointed out when I was young. It, it wasn't as much because... Well, now we have technology that we can get the information out there. So just remember, at all ages, we want to focus on good posture, doing homework, sitting in the com doing computer work, even slouching in a chair to correct that. And the other thing I want to point out is this. 
the core. We always talk about the core and how important it is, but I think you have to work at core with st static and dynamic core stability. The plank is a great start, I think, for core stability. But think about this. We don't function in a static position. We move, and we have to deal with rotary stability through rotation, especially think about this with athletes who deal with a lot of rotation, a baseball players, or it could be in football, a quarterback. Where there's rotation, we want to deal with rotary stability, stabilizing the spine through rotation. These are things we want to look at with working with core. Core helps with posture because it connects our upper and lower body. Start getting kids involved with activities that help do that. For fun, I mentioned this before, some great exercises start are the planks, side planks and regular traditional planks that are in the four-point position with both arms and both legs, both, both elbows and both legs. And if they can't do that, you can progress through different levels of the plank. The other things that I like too are the bear crawl, the forward and backwards, and the inchworm. The push-ups are great too. And with the push-up progression, I've talked about that in a previous episode, I like dealing with a push-up progression from a wall. You can go to a countertop. You can go from a countertop to a lower surface, maybe a, if you have stairs at home to the, to the level of a stair that's comfortable that they can move the range, three sets of 10. But here's the thing with the progression. I'm not a big one on off the knees. And the reason being is that we're looking at postural control with the push-up. And if we can progress from an angle off of a wall down to them doing a, a traditional push-up off of the ground, and we progress it with them with both feet versus off of the knees in that position, keeping the body in that, that stabilized position from the neck all the way down to our ankle in that stabilized position. Well, we've already taught it from progressing from a wall squat all the way to a traditional floor squat. So just think about those things. Those are things that we really want to work on to help the athlete develop. And everybody do this too. Tune in Friday because what I'm going over Friday is we're going over optimal performance. And the building foundation is key. In order to be optimal with performance, we first have to build a foundation. I'm going to go over something this Friday that is a great piece of information for the young athletes. So all young athletes have them tune in. I've got a way to put this into perspective for them, especially those that are not patient. They're looking to get end results now. So tune in Friday as we go over that. Everyone, that concludes today's episode. So remember, posture is important because it is. It is the foundation, one of the pieces, one of the foundations that helps with our overall development. So everyone, as always, close out with, take care and have a phenomenal week. Hey, everyone, visit our website at the dyanetwork.org for more information on ways to help the young athlete develop. And if you could do us a favor and leave us a rating or review, and please go out and share this episode, pass it along. We would really appreciate it. Until next time, remember, give 100% in life pursuing your dreams and never give up. Take care.